why are Americans so obsessed with guns? I mean, after all, isn't it obvious that gun control has led to lower gun violence in every country that has implemented it? And before anyone starts talking about the Second Amendment, let's face it. If you need a weapon of war like an AR-15 to hunt, then you probably suck at hunting. Well, here's a counterpoint. If you need an unarmed populace to govern, then maybe you suck at governing. But let's be fair and look at what the Second Amendment actually says. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. You'll notice there is nothing in there referencing hunting. Honestly, whenever anyone attempts to suggest that the Second Amendment is about hunting, I like to remind them that the founders didn't include it in the Bill of Rights shortly after a hunting trip. They made it the second thing they mentioned in the Bill of Rights because they had just got done fighting a war against the strongest army in the world, relying a great deal on state militias. But Nick, times have changed. After all, the Second Amendment was written for things like flintlock muskets, not modern weapons. Well, if you believe that is true, then you'll probably also conclude that the First Amendment was only written for things like quill pens. And I guess the Fourth Amendment doesn't prevent the government from tapping your phone whenever they want, because after all, the First and Fourth Amendments weren't written for modern technology. But wait, doesn't the Second Amendment state a well-regulated militia? Surely that means that gun ownership only applies to things like the National Guard. Yeah, except that's not right. It's not even close. The founders not only expected that citizens would be able to own guns, they believed they should be able to own ones capable of, quote, defending a free state. Hard to do that if no weapons of war are permitted. So am I honestly saying that the founders expected law-abiding citizens to be able to own the kind of small arms that our military has? Yes, founders like George Mason, James Madison, and many others were pretty clear about that. And far from being unable to anticipate technological changes or issues with crime, the founders actually understood something about private gun ownership that modern politicians seem incapable of understanding or respecting. Namely, that being able to own firearms is an essential component to maintaining a free society. The whole point about a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state being included in the amendment was born out of the founders' mistrust of both standing armies and the pernicious inclination of political elites to attempt to control people by first disarming them. Now, if you don't believe me, I would remind everyone that not a single politician calling for gun bans or even confiscation believes that the police forces should be deprived of such weapons. In fact, when it comes to government agencies, the same politicians who believe that private citizens can't be trusted with firearms insist that the agents of the government responsible for their protection be incredibly well armed. Not to mention the people who would be responsible for ensuring that the laws that politicians passed are rigorously enforced. They of course remind us that countries that have banned guns have less gun violence, but they do that while ignoring other types of violence that inevitably take place when citizens can't protect themselves. Not to mention the fact that there is no shortage of examples of authoritarian governments which enjoy oppressing their own people, especially the ones which are disarmed and unable to protect themselves. So let's ask the question, do more guns in society allow for more gun violence? Well, that's certainly a possibility. So, is the solution that only agents of the government should be able to have guns? Well, if it is, then consider this. As bad as the record may be for certain criminals or even criminal organizations to have easy access to firearms, it is nothing compared to the atrocious record of what happens when a heavily armed government decides that it is no longer interested in the rights of its own citizens. As Thomas Sowell once said, the government doesn't deal in solutions, it deals in trade-offs. And if the trade-off politicians are offering Americans is greater safety at the expense of our right to defend ourselves, then I would like to point out that the cities that have adopted these policies don't seem to be better off as a result. And I don't intend to entrust my safety to people who simultaneously want to disarm me for doing nothing wrong while advocating violent felons be let out of jail early for good behavior. Ultimately, the Second Amendment was written the way it was because the founders recognized both an individual right to keep and bear arms, as well as the necessity of an armed citizenry to be able to defend against tyranny and protect one's freedoms. So, are Americans obsessed with guns? No, but we are pretty obsessed with ensuring the security of the people and the ideas that we love. And that means viewing with extreme skepticism the notion that we don't need to be able to protect ourselves because politicians will do it for us.